Hello, you beautiful nerds. Welcome to the Drug Banthas Podcast, where we talk about sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and all of the popular art that we love. Also, we do a drug. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Brother Bill. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. We got to get a real producer, so I ain't got to say ding every time when you say, and we do a drug. <laughs> Uh, you, you're, the real producer you're talking about is me. I just have to do it. <laughs> I said we gotta get a real producer. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm uh, I'm Jedi, Jedi Master Grayson, and today uh, I'm very excited because uh, we got a very special show. Uh, we have a because we have a very special guest, YouTube extraordinaire Michael, the Black Gay Comic Geek. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I don't know about the uh, YouTube extraordinaire part. Well, I'll, I'll take it. I'm, words of affirmation is like one of my number one love languages, so I'll, I'll take it. But I, I guess I'll be your uh, like your designated driver since I'm like drinking over here. So yeah, yeah he's, uh, the designated host uh, this evening. Um, yeah, we definitely yeah. need a DD in here sometimes. Not, not that I'm against that. drinking. Not that I'm against drinking irresponsibly. I wish I had some tequila, but it's all I got right now. So. <laughs> hey, we're, we're speaking, speaking things into existence, existence today. today. Uh, uh, just, 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 just feel, feel it. it. Like, like you'll just I mean, feel the drive. I, mean, I, I, I live in the hood, so you know the liquor store is always open somewhere. So maybe after this stream, <laughs> after this stream is done. See, that means. See, it just means you got to come back for the next one, and you got to you got to go in just as hard. <laughs> Hey, sometimes you got to drink to feel better, and sometimes you got to drink to feel even better. And depending on how you felt about this movie, because this has been a very divisive one, uh, today we're talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. A uh, huge spoiler alert, because we're because we're talking about everything. Spoilers, uh, spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> spoilers. Spoilers. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not mentioning any words on this one. Um, also, this movie is otherwise known as... John, John the, the Majors, Majors movie. movie. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, let's be honest, that's, that's what was bringing, bringing everybody to the theaters on this one. one. I don't think anybody was super hyped for a third Ant Man movie uh, until they announced that uh, John the Majors. Sexiest movie. man in the world. You don't, you don't think nobody was coming to see the sexiest man? No, I'm saying they weren't Paul until he was. <laughs> Paul Rudd. No, 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 no Paul. Rudd. No, Paul Rudd. I was gonna say a little, a little flex, <laughs> but this is. This is the hand that touched Jonathan Majors. So. What? <laughs> burr, 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 burr. <laughs> yeah, I was actually. actually I'm sorry, sorry. Right. I was like, I mean, I did, but I'm just joking. I, I tell people, I like, yeah, I ain't, I still haven't showered since I since that day. So <laughs> even, even though I have, I showered. Uh, yeah, I I, I, tried, I stuck my hand out while I was in the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like. I, 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 I did, did hear because uh, I was listening to your. I'm, I'm sorry. That's just so ridiculous. That's <laughs> what I guess. I, I, I just got visions of you in the shower with a paper bag or a plastic bag wrapped around your arm. Yeah, wrapped around like, yeah. <laughs> like you got a cast on. You're like, no, 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 no. I met Jonathan Majors last week. Yeah, that's what that, that's what you got. That's what I got. To do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, speaking of Johnny Majors and the sexiest man in the world, Paul Rudd. Uh, what uh, what did you guys think of this one? Uh, initial thoughts, like uh, better than the first two, worse than the first two. Uh, uh, Michael, let's go first. first. Yeah, so, Michael. Uh, well, if you want to know, like, where would I rank this movie? Uh, I would say Ant Man, Quantum Mania, Ant Man and the Wasp. So okay. I definitely think it's better than Ant Man and the Wasp, but. As the kids say, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not Gen Z, I'm a millennial, but <laughs> as, as the kids would say, ultimately, though, I thought this movie was mid. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and of course, we'll get, we'll, get more, we'll get more into it as we talk more. <laughs> no, yeah, those, right those, those my, yeah, those are my brief. Ooh, that's, that's a sizzle, sizzle right there. That's, that's like, like a, a cast iron skillet, skillet going on right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's funny, funny when you said that. It's like mid. Huh? Yeah, is that, that what the kids, kids are saying? Right? Yeah, I'm gonna have right that's, 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 the, that's what the kids. Are, that's what the kids are saying. I'm like it's mid. Uh, oh, sorry, I got a, a dog intrusion. Uh, puppy intrusion. But uh, yeah, oh, my ass over there. What about you, uh, Bill? What did you? Uh, what did you? What did you uh, think of? Yeah, I don't appreciate you calling me by my government name. <laughs> you know. Not for, for stuff like it. this, man. It's just no, no I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> Kang, I liked it. Kang is looking for him. That's yeah, <laughs> Kang is looking for me, man. You know what I'm saying? He who shall not be named, or what is his name? <laughs> oh, he who remains. He who remains. He who remains. He who he remains. Yeah. yeah but, well, he yeah, did. Man. That so. That's, That's what they, they call me at the bar in Highland Park. Park. 
<laughs> yeah, when they do last call, it's like that. Hey, you last call, say, you hey, remain still, yeah, still here. Yeah. It is 235. 235. He is still This is the nigga who won't just, just leave. leave. This, this <laughs> nigga. The, the, the I thought it was a good movie. movie. The nigga who remains. The nigga who remains. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried to just, just jump, jump into it like, like, oh, like I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a good movie, but like I have no expectations because it's kind of like when I told you about Alex when I told you about the uh, Jonathan Majors cameo in the Loki episode. Mm. Last episode, of Loki. it's like I loved how he performed that character. Because this character is going to be so different every time we see him from this episode or that episode to now this movie and the next few movies and possibly other TV shows that we're going to see him in. Like, Jonathan Majors might be, he's going to be like Stephen A. Smith for ESPN. He's going to be doing everything but getting one check. <laughs> one big check. I haven't really been paying attention to it as like, or anticipating it as like, oh, this is a big movie that I need to be prepared for. I just, just been seeing it as like a little crumb. But I understand why some people be like, yo, it just fell short. short. You know, and, and we'll, we'll talk about those shortfalls short here coming up. Yeah, I mean, I got Kang back there. Some you won't be able to see him, but he's back there on my <laughs> on the multitude. On my, if you can tell me where he is back there. Put it in the comments, and <laughs> you the nah, you won't be able to. I'm like, I, I'm sitting right here, and I'm like, where the fuck is he? Yo? <laughs> <laughs> I know he over there. Oh wait, I see him. He's all, yeah, he's in the back, so you won't be able to see. Right, oh, that's a dense group. Funny enough, he's in the back next to Reed Richards and Tony Stark. So oh, man. <laughs> he's in the video <laughs> family. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Reed, Reed, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I similarly like. I, I really liked it. I probably uh, would put it in the same rankings because I did enjoy the first Ant Man movie a lot. Um, but I also don't really like Hayden Reed that much as a director. Uh, and I think that's uh, it, 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 what you know. It was, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, but I, 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 I think I like this movie more than most people. Because, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed the family dynamic of it. Uh, I'm not that big of an Ant Man fan. I like that way that it feels more like a Fantastic Four movie than an Ant Man. Who, who has an Ant Man comic? If you got one, tell me what it is. Put it in the comments right now. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, I, I, on the whole, I enjoyed it. Uh, and I, don't, I definitely don't understand why it's getting so much hate. Like, uh, but we'll get into that, I guess, as we get through the go through the plot. I was like, uh, technically, technically, I got Ant Man because I got Marvel Unlimited. Ooh. <laughs> so, I mean, I got all. There you I got go. All of it. <laughs> yeah, tell me what your your favorite uh, comic uh, Ant Man comic is uh, later. Because uh, I'm very, I'm very I'm, curious. I, I, I don't know about all. That. Now you're going too far. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that. <laughs> <laughs> Why you trying to pull them out in the middle of everybody in class? I, well, I said later. You know, it's like I'll probably we'll talk about it because I'm sure you have done tons and tons of choices. Um, but yeah, there's been a lot of anticipation around this movie. Oh, uh, we're starting uh, to get that. Right now. Now. Puns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I wrote that one down. I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. I'm not a fan of the puns. <laughs> I mean, not, not puns, puns in general, just, just his puns, mostly. <laughs> uh, no, mine, mine are like really <laughs> solid dad jokes. Yeah. Um, you, 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 you laugh out of uh, disappointment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I don't throw up. <laughs> um, but yeah, and there's been <laughs> there's been a, a lot of you know uh, anticipation around this because of John Majors as Kang. Um, uh, what did you guys think of John Majors, uh, like, as, like, as far as a villain goes, uh, in, like, the grand pantheon of the MCU? Uh, Mike? So, for me, that's the thing that really saved this movie for me, Jonathan Majors mm. and his performance as Kang. And then not only him, but him and Janet, Michelle Pfeiffer, yeah. Cat- mm. I am Catwoman, hear me roar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you said so something right there. They're, they're the ones that made the movie really interesting Mm -hmm. to me especially like you know like especially when you go back to like jonathan majors and like lovecraft country and then like seeing him play this different type of role and Mm -hmm. 
without even trying to, like he he stepped on the, he stepped on the screen he was already villainous he you already knew he was somebody that you had to watch out for he was somebody not to 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 be fucked with like the yeah. moment where like Modoc tried to like interrupt him he like slammed him against the <laughs> slammed him against the wall and was like don't interrupt me when I'm talking motherfucker like right yeah I will, I will beat your ass like I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> so like and then just like without trying to be I'm like man I'm, I was like that man is sexy I was like I want you to slam me against the wall like, come on like <laughs> Even in the end, when he had, when he like lost his suit, you saw them arms popping out, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> see I was like, those cream shoulders." Yeah. yeah. Even when I met him in person, he was like busting out that suit. So I was like, come, "Like," but the only thing I was like, "Man," I was getting upset because like I was like, they released this or that they had the premiere for this movie the same day they released those Valentine's Day shoot photos. Oh yeah. I was like, <laughs> y'all don't have not one shirtless scene. Of ca- like, come on. Like, but, but all joke, but all jokes aside, I'm like, yeah, he, he could have he could have joined the Marvel Chess Club. Like, why can't Johnny? But all jokes aside, like his performance and his character, and like not the writing, but his performance mm-hmm. of Kang is what really had me invested in the movie. Right. And I'll get more into it later. But like certain things that they did, certain things they did with his character, I'm just like. While I'm enjoying Jonathan Major's performance, part of mm-hmm. me is like, why am I excited about Kang as a villain? Where it's like you're building all, you're having him be built up this much, and he like you got beat beat taken out by Ant Man, dog. Like, <laughs> that is kind of true. true. That yeah, has been like, one of all, the all the teas com- about how he took out multiple universes. He's killed trillions of people. He's killed so many Thors and Avengers. He don't even remember. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I- yet, in this movie, like, and, and Kevin Feige said, this is the Kang the Conqueror. This isn't like a variant. This isn't he who remains or whatever. He's like, this is the right. guy. So how is the guy already dead? And granted, he could be like, oh, he's not really dead. Maybe he's stuck in a, a quantum quantum verse and yeah. he'll come back. But still, he shouldn't have been defeated in this movie. So That's it's a like, tiny, tiny, tiny world. A quantum quantum verse. Like, is, is that, that what whole fun this is? is? <laughs> what that, that what? Is, is lives in a fuck like it lives in a quantum quantum verse. You know what I'm saying? Like it's that's a tiny place to be. Like you know, you smaller than bacteria. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess, I guess this, this whole fight could be taking place in, in some. I like. So. I like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's that small. But I, I like where Michael's going with this because it's kind of where I was kind of going to go with it a little bit because to your point, you shouldn't have been that easy to kill. So, so that leads, leads us to assume, logically, that he's still alive. He has right? to be. If he's not alive, I'm be mad. But then Marvel does have a tendency of killing their villains. So like they do. He might yeah. be still yeah. this. But this version might be dead. They're like, oh well, this version dead, but we still got thousands of others. But it's like this. Right. Is, but then don't call him Kang the Conqueror. There's like wait with that name. <laughs> like let this mm. let him be Cra- let him be Craig the Conqueror. And that's how he was able to. Do that. <laughs> Like Wallace, he could be Wallace <laughs> the Conqueror. Yeah, uh, but yeah, see, I think, I think that this is Kang the Conqueror, and, and I don't think he's dead. dead. And, and I'll, I'll tell you why. why. It's because this Kang made a statement. He, he said, "I am the only one that can defeat the danger that is coming. None, None of you can see it." But I'm the only one who can stop it. I've already seen it. Now that tells me this dude ain't dead. They're gonna have to go back and get him or bring him out in the you know Avengers, big Avengers movie where we gotta figure out like how do we stop all these kings? Mm. You gotta bring out the one that's the most vicious and the most righteous. <laughs> and Kane in the comic book. Is like an anti-hero type dude. He's not always fighting against the Avengers. He fights with the Avengers a couple times. So That's maybe true. we'll maybe we'll see. But I just even just the implication that he's possibly dead. Mm. I, I wasn't a I wasn't a fan of that. Especially because especially with all the build up of him being the biggest baddest of all the other kings. Right. He's yeah. so dangerous. He's so dangerous that they all banded together to trap him in the in the quantum realm. And yet mm. again. 
you got defeated by Ant Man. <laughs> yeah. hey, te- well, hey, granted, also- hey, granted, technically it wasn't Ant Man because he did whoop Scott Lang's ass. Yeah, but- he, I did like how he whooped his ass. <laughs> <laughs> so technically it wasn't Ant Man, but still, mm-hmm. like, come on. I did. Uh, I, I technically, technically it was the technically it was the wasp. Yeah, technically it was more of the wasps. They actually ate much of that. Well, te- like, te- <laughs> technically it was the ants because they destroyed. Oh the yeah, the ants. I was gonna say that first. It was a level. It was a level to his. That's a fact. So really, Ant Man didn't do much of that. Unless you're talking about Hank. Oh gee. But he still got his ass beat in that Ant Man movie though. So like. Yeah. I, I, I do. You, you can't count right. this up a bit. And then not only just that, but there were moments where the, it's a whole ass rebellion happening right mm. now. Like, he's just standing there watching it happen, not doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, the re- the no, rebellion was like a very weak part of the of the movie, uh, which I think that also was like the quantum the quantum indigenous people uh, were not really like that well developed. But I I, I do like. Intellectually, I understand that okay, he Kang is in the quantum realm, so he's not tapped into you know technically his most you know powerful power, he gets manipulation of time yep. and space. Okay. So you know if that's why he's such a big threat outside of the quantum realm. But see, I think that <laughs> I think <laughs> I think it's like because they didn't they didn't hammer that home. I know that intellectually after thinking about it, it's like well, I guess that's why he's not that strong. But I don't think they explicitly say that in the movie. Uh, they just, but like he does, he's they not in control of time, and Janet just because says that she, Janet says she basically only gave him a piece of his power back by giving him his suit back. So mm. there's clearly technology that he wasn't having access to, and I think that it showed that it showed what Kang's actual weakness will be going forward, which is he overestimates or underestimates, excuse me, the uh, the enemy. Because he's seen himself kill these motherfuckers like I don't know how many times in how many different mm. universes and timelines. He's like, oh yeah, which one are you? Are you the one with the hammer or are you the one that turns green? I can't remember. I killed all of y'all. You know what I'm saying? I gotta pull. Oh. I gotta pull. Kanye West was like, I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce should. Nah, I don't, <laughs> I don't accept. I don't accept that answer only because like. Yeah, they say he only he didn't he didn't have his full power yada yada yada, but he had mm. enough power where there was literally a moment where he stopped Janet in her tracks, froze time, and made yeah, her go away. Right, right, right. But then we didn't see him do that ever again with nobody else. Nope. Then there was moments where he's blasting motherfuckers and they're disintegrating instantly. But then he blasts Ant Man and Janet and all that, and they just ah. And it's like how come they didn't disintegrate? <laughs> like to me, that's right. Like, that's bad, right? And on top of that, and I made a, a TikTok video about this, and I didn't think about this while watching the movie, but to, but like the longer I sit with the movie, the less I like it. But like, you got Modok, who was Darren Cross, who was also Yellow Jacket, who also has access to pin particles, right? Who is now your minion? Mm. And. <laughs> Kang is a genius level intellect that has centuries level technology beyond anything that we could currently comprehend in the MCU. A, why did he need Janet to create pin particles? Where Ooh. you have Darren Cross right there. Well, you have Darren Cross right there. A, not only was Darren working on making his own version of pin particles in the first movie, but then he also got it with a yellow jacket suit. And then right. let's say when he became Modoc. The pin particles were destroyed, and he didn't have any more to make uh, for for the yellow jack. He didn't the, the, he didn't have any uh, the knowledge to be able to make it. Right. But clearly mm. he had, but clearly he has some level of knowledge because remember it was Modoc that shrunk Hank, Janet, Cassie, and uh, 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 why am I drawing a blank on Scott? Oh, oh, Scott. He, yeah, mm. he shrunk them to go into the quantum realm. So obviously he has something. So if he's able to shrink, he should be able to to shrink that particle accelerator, whatever the fuck it's called. I'm, that's the flash. Right. Like, that shit. <laughs> like, I, Grant, I'm going on a rant, but I'm just like, well, you really think no, about no. There's a lot of plot holes in this movie that it just didn't mesh with me. And honestly, mm. to me, this movie felt no. like a fucking Saturday morning cartoon. Like, it was too goofy. Like, this movie, <laughs> I, this movie should have been way darker than it was. It I been, agree. And I don't even mm. mean rated R, but like, this is the no, problem. No, I, that's, no, that's, I agree completely with everything you're saying. The, the only problem, problem is, when I put on my like executive producer hat, now I'm not saying that this is what actually happened, 
But I'm saying these are things that you can explain away in the world of comic book land. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm Kevin Feige and you pull up on me with all the arguments that you just had, I let you finish. I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> but then I'm going to just be like, yeah, but Hank Penn is the only one who can control uh, pen particles. That's through the timeline of the Marvel Universe. Yeah, even sure. even Mr. Fantastic can't recreate pen particles. Even Tony Stark can't recreate pen particles. They've tried. They just can't do it. Hank Penn got the code. He got the cheat code to that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Kevin Feige will have one of his. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You say that, but then how did they get his? How did how did they how did Modoc shrink them to go to the quantum realm? So they had, that they means had that he would have. Particles. You're right. So, so that, that means that uh, he would have, have some pen particles, but he would only have so many because, as we know, they don't just like grow on trees, and you you, you can use them up as they've established in the previous movies. You cannot have some. So. I'm just saying, I'm not saying that this is what happened, but if this is going to be the bullshit answer that you're going to get in about six months on Twitter, yeah, I'm and sure, uh, the next, when the next movie comes out, they're going to say, well, look, that makes sense. <laughs> well, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure Kevin Feige will have one of his famous interviews where they ask him about plot holes, and he's like, oh, it means this and that. And, well, it's because, uh, you know, I guess Danny kind of forgot about the fleet. Um, <laughs> I mean, I get it. There's, 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 a lot of, there's a lot of movies that have plot holes or things, you know, conveniences and things like that. But if the movie was better for me, then I wouldn't mm. be like thinking about like nitpicking and then thinking about more and more and more, and more right. shit. But but like I said, like this movie ultimately felt like a Saturday morning cartoon. Like even mm. the ending, it's like, oh, this cake is nasty. End credits. It's like, come on, like this movie yes. should not this. And this and this honestly has me nervous about Daredevil. What they're gonna do mm. with Daredevil: Born Again? In terms well, of like, always, the watch, I feel like, because mm. I feel like the MCU is still trying to live in the Kevin, Fe not Kevin Feige, the Joss Whedon Avengers quip land. Right. It's like after twenty, mm. after twenty five movies, we don't have to do that anymore. Right. Like, it, they, they are, are to a degree, degree and I will say that Daredevil. I don't think we have to worry about that happening to Daredevil, just because they've established that they can go edgy on Disney Plus. Have they though? They've established, they've established that they, they can, can, but because I even think of like Moon Knight. Moon Knight wasn't that dark. Moon Knight was not even close. Like even a lot of the scenes, like the, mm. the scenes where the not, characters Mar were taking people out, like they cut away from it. Yeah, all that stuff, like Moon Knight was very disappointing. No, uh, that was and but you, at least Andor, I feel like is definitely one of the more mature right, things. That's what I was going to mention. I was going to yeah, mention that's not, Andor. That's not Marvel, though. That's, yeah, true. No, it's not. True. But I'm saying Disney Plus. Like I've, they've established that that's not the gonna. That's not going to be what hinders them the but that, channel that, itself that that has been a, a common criticism with all the mcu what? is that just like the the lack of feeling of stakes not necessarily like that has to be somebody major superhero who dies in every movie but you know they just people want a sense of like oh like sense of dread like everything's not going to be perfectly okay after every single movie like like a saturday morning cartoon but i will say this i've said this plenty of times on this channel anytime I feel exactly how you just expressed how you feel about it. Where you feel like you're watching a Saturday morning cartoon, I remind myself, damn, I'm watching a children's movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, And that's the only thing I can explain in a way to make it like just me, me not go crazy in the movie theater. Like, man, fuck this movie. This movie they don't even care about the continuity of this movie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, it is. I mean, it is like you know they're trying to make as much money as possible, trying uh, to appease as many people as possible. So yeah, there is that aspect. But well, I'm not even well, well, sure. like when, when, in, the sense, sure. in the sense of making it dark. I don't even necessarily. I don't mean like make it darker in terms of like make it rated R. Mm. Like you can still be right. very dark mm. and still be PG thirteen. Like Infinity War was yeah. dark as hell. Yeah. Endgame game was Definitely. dark as hell. Mm -hmm. So like you can still go that route and still be PG thirteen and still get the audience yeah, 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 yeah. or whatever. No, you know what I mean? Ant Man one isn't that, but then if you're gonna introduce Kane the Conqueror and then they let this be the first I agree. movie of and then this is supposed to be the biggest like this guy's supposed to be a bigger badass than Thanos, mm. then yeah, it should have been darker. This is the yeah. first time somebody else is saying no channel I would have to say, mm. so I'm just happy. <laughs> oh, really, I, I, like, the only reason I disagreed with you is because it, it would have been a very boring 26 minutes if I hadn't just 
Yeah, because I'm like, now I'm like, I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm supposed to fear Kang. I'm supposed to be like, oh, nah, the Avengers are fucked. But it's like, <laughs> he was, he was taken out. Now, this is twice now we've seen a version of Kang die mm. pretty much instantly. He who remained, right. oh, he, he wasn't a Kang, he, was, he wasn't, he wasn't a Kang, and he was like, he wasn't really fighting right. on, you know, but at the same time, it's still like, oh, you got to be scared of me and my parents. You got to be scared, but it's like I'm glad you mentioned that. Do you, do, you you do you think this Do you think this king is the king, the conqueror that was? According to, according to Kevin, Reigns? according to Kevin Feige, he wait. So how to say it? Wait, say that again. So do you think that he who remains is the king, the conqueror that we just saw today? Well, no, they're two different. They're like variants of each other. But I'm just saying, like the fact that we still seen two versions of Kang die. Yeah. Well, th there is definitely. Uh, I've heard some theories out there that like because their you know uh, motivations are very similar, like basically trying to uh, in the war, uh, yeah, in, in the war and through like you know devastating uh, different timelines. And you know, he who remains through the TVA. Uh, and Kang through just like annihilating <laughs> uh, realities that like maybe like they're uh, with this weird time loop that we're in. Uh, maybe Kang is he remains. I think that that's not true just because I think that they're deliberately naming all of these characters differently. Like uh, you know the Centurion and like uh, like I think all these characters are gonna have different I'm gonna, names. I'm gonna, like, gonna try to make it make sense. Kang. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try, try to make it make, make sense just really quick. Loki, who is in the Loki TV show, was bumped out of time, right? So yeah. he, <laughs> I'm really he, saw he who remained, uh -huh. did. Now, they kill he who remains, but then he gets bumped back out of time, back to the ETA. Who's to say that when the thing went back in circle, I'm like back on start. Right. We're, We're not now, now back in the where Ant Man was in the original universe that saved the world and killed Thanos. Who's to say that we're not now at that beginning? Where now the king who we was who who he who remained. <laughs> he who remained is not which, which actually now I think about it, you can still call him the who remains because he's still yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's who remains. It actually it rolled on the tongue way better. Yeah. <laughs> Uh yeah, like I think that yeah, all since there's all this time loop stuff, we're really not gonna understand like, the tapestry of all we're not gonna be able to understand the tapestry of it all until you know after the King Dynasty movie is finished. Um but before uh, since, like before it's also something you shouldn't about talk King. about after you take the shots. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you'll I'm also his. wondering because again, according to Kevin Feige, this is mm. like the Kang the Conqueror, and then also Kang the Conqueror is in charge of the TVA. Especially, we saw the statue at the end of Loki season one. So, I'm right. like, what is his? Especially since the TVA is outside of space and time, the quantum realm is outside of space and time. So, there was right. theories that you got to travel through the quantum realm, the time travel, yada yada yada. So, I'm like, mm -hmm. so how? Where does this version of Kang connect to the TVA, or does he connect? Right. To the they didn't remember. Holy the shit! You just fucked it up. up. I was like, they don't even because remember the TVA or doesn't the king own the statue in the in the Loki? Don't he got scars? Yeah. Uh, so that is. So look, I'm gonna tell you how I know King is alive. I'm gonna tell you how I know King is still alive. The ETA just would have popped in and grabbed him out of TVA, ETA, the goddamn PDA. Shit, I don't know, but you know what I'm saying. These motherfuckers went in the time and grabbed Kang. Especially, you know who? You know who? More likely than not, his his girlfriend. What's the black girl? Oh, name Renslayer. On? Yeah, Gugu and Bathura. Yeah. I think I solved it. Now, if we if it happens first, you heard it here first. That's all I want to <laughs> say. Yeah, yeah. There's a a lot going on. I do have faith that they they at least know what they're doing since they have a lot of Rick and Morty writers on, on uh, doing this and. Uh, they uh, they know the 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 tapestries of the multiverse in and out like they fuck with the multiverse all the time on that show um but we've been talking a lot about kang uh before we get out of here let's talk a little bit about the titular characters and man of the wasp let's talk about what made the rest <laughs> of the movie bad <laughs> well uh 
<laughs> well, what did you like? Did you oh, did you at least dig any of like the family uh, aspects of it, or any of like the other story of like the rebellion? I know there's like some clunky stuff going on there. Uh, what did you think of? Yeah, just like the the main plot outside of the Kang uh, conflict. I mean, uh, going going back to like the plot holes regarding this movie, like there's a lot of things that I feel like just didn't make sense regarding this movie. Like for example, going into Jan- Janet, like as, as much as I really enjoyed her, and granted, I'm like Janet gets around, like you know she sleeps with Bill Murray, <laughs> and you know she definitely sleep, she definitely sleeping with Kang. Now kudos, you know, kudos <laughs> to her. you know she trapped in the quantum realm. She got needs, and I mean if I was down there with Jonathan Majors, I'd be sleeping with him too. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Yeah, it's like so you think so you think uh Kane and Janet got down. Oh, they definitely got down. They definitely, she, <laughs> hey, was like, she was like she was like, it was nice to have a friend being alone. So I, come on now. Like yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and it's Michelle Pfeiffer, like come on. John <laughs> Kane, Kane got down there. Kane got down there. And he was yeah, like Kane down there by himself. Jackson, too. Like, come if on, you're nasty. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Like if if she's if, I, if, I don't I don't want to live in a world where she's has sex with Bill Murray in the quantum realm and doesn't have sex with Jonathan Majors. Yeah, exactly. Right. She she definitely done. She at least the both she of them. Both. Right. Yeah, I think, I think that, that I will, my name is Bill and I approve this. And message. I mean, and, and then only two people in thirty years. That's like that's nothing. Like I saw some people slut shame of her. It's like <laughs> yeah, like what? What's up with two people? Like. Right. Two people in 30 years? That's yeah. right. And, and then she went to war with one of them. Like, yeah. Naturally. Yeah. Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> but I was Seems saying, like- go, go, going more to like plot mm-hmm. holes, what I was saying is like, in many ways, a lot of Janet's motivations don't make sense when you think about the other movie. Because like, like, think about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Mm-hmm. She was like pushing for them to go into the quantum. She's like, oh yeah, that's medicine yes. down there. All of that stuff. <laughs> like she's like, oh yeah, ask me anything about the fuck. Let's, right. send, let's, <laughs> let's send Hank. I mean, let's send Scott back into the quantum realm. Then they got blipped and yeah. they got to bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> but then you get to this movie, it's like the quantum realm. No, you can't go there. Don't ask me any questions. I don't want to talk about it. It's like, who are you? The, what, the, like, this is not the same Janet that we right. just saw in the previous movie. Like, you were help, you were hoping for them to go on. You were begging them to go to the quantum run. Now all of a sudden it's don't go there. It's because y'all yeah. didn't think of, because y'all didn't think about this yet. Or yeah, like, yeah, I think about it. Or like even just more of the dynamics. Like I wish we could have seen more. Like talk about family dynamics. We could have seen more mm. family dynamics between Hank and Janet. Like they've been apart for thirty plus years, and, and like getting to see yeah. mm-hmm. more of a building of their relationship. And this is also like a, a thing. I don't know if you guys seen. There was a, a deleted scene from Ant Man and the Wasp where you got mm. to see Hank and Janet in the '60s as the original Ant Man right. and the Wasp. Mm-hmm. And it's like stuff mm-hmm. like that is stuff that we were missing. And then also like um, this movie was called Ant Man and the Wasp. And granted, Janet is the original Wasp, but for the MCU's purposes, it's Hope. Mm-hmm. We barely got anything from Hope in this movie. Like she was, right. like, she was just there. But like, speak on this. Hope is so damn fine. I'm like, <laughs> hold on, why are we ain't getting more of that? <laughs> but yeah, like yeah, so we. We barely got real. The only fa- real family dynamic we got is between Cassie and Cassie and Scott. Dad, like how many times did she say "Dad" in that movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be a fun drink challenge. Uh, no, yeah, that's, that's exactly, exactly what I'm doing next time I go to the movie. I'm <laughs> fucking going to see it at 40x, and I'm going to see. Uh, we're gonna drink. drink we're yeah, gonna drink shop wide in front of. I don't think they'll they'll let you do that movie there. And, and then oh, yeah, yeah, depending depend on, depend on what movie, yeah, depending on what movie, there's some dining theaters where you get <laughs> alcohol. That's a good and point. Then, and then, like, last thing I'll say, I don't want to, like, monopolize the no, no, no. It's not just me on this panel. But, like, <laughs> but even even with that, like, in terms of, like, again, like, lack of character development. Like, this mm. movie didn't feel like an Ant-Man movie. It just felt like phase one. I mean, phase five, part one. But, like, right. even even going to, like, things with, like, MODOK. You have Cassie and MODOK interacting with each other. And for Cassie, that's her boogeyman. Like this man tried to kill her when she was six years old. Right. Yeah, and they so, even mention it in this movie. Yeah, they even mention it in this, but then they like did the funny look again, MCU doing the joke. It's like you're not mm. a dick. Don't be a dick. But imagine if she was like terrified that she had to come up against this man, that she's running into this man again. And the fact that she has to, you know, she's trying to prove herself. She's trying to prove herself to be a superhero. And the like if she had to overcome like intense level of fear to go against what she sees as the boogeyman, the thing right. that tried to kill her when she was, you know, the the, the, the creature under her bed, more or less. Like right, again, right. it's like a lot of moments where this 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 movie failed. 
mm -hmm. they could have did a lot of character character development between these characters. Like, it didn't feel like an Ant-Man trilogy. Like, are we even getting another Ant-Man movie? Like, it didn't feel like the end of a trilogy. Right. Yeah, no, I, that that all all that is like definitely fair because like they they I I didn't really feel like Modok needed to be in this movie at all. I'm very curious what the motivation was for them putting him in it. Nope. I know. Yeah. I I think yeah, like some Thanos Loki shit. <laughs> like for right. the first phases. Right, you know, yeah, like, like we see yeah. Loki, but then it's really Thanos in the background. You mm -hmm. know, he's the and one it's, really doing shit. And it seems like they're even almost trying to evoke that kind of energy with like the first like thirty minutes. Everyone's just like sort of talking about Kang. You don't really get to see him uh, until like kind of, sort of later in the movie. Uh, but yeah, I do agree that they they kind of drop the ball with like sort of the the family dynamic of potential. Uh, because yeah, there's like you know, like you said, the 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 miss time the miss time between. Henry and Janet, uh, the weird relationship between Hope and Janet. Uh, now Hope is a kind of a stepmom to Cassie, uh, so like we didn't really explore that uh, either. Uh, but I think also like since I think Evangeline Lilly getting into some sort of hot water last year it ended up having her get cut out of this movie a lot. There's like a lot of awkward. I mean, but so did Letitia, so right? But they still made her Black Panther, so I don't know. Yeah, and that's eventually, that's and eventually, Lily is yep. a a white woman, so she couldn't, <laughs> she couldn't have gotten that much. She couldn't have gotten that much trouble. Right. What did she say? But those Ant Man movies she, don't she, make she, a million she dollars. Was, so. She was like, she was anti, she was anti vax and came out on Twitter and did a lot of like. No, 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 no! I'm talking about uh, Wiley. Yeah. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, she was anti vax too. Both of them, man. Yeah, yeah, both of them. Hey, she was talking about, shit. you know, she, not getting her kids back. Like, it was. It was it's well, a see, who said we can't come together as racists? <laughs> who say racists can't come together? We come together on a lot of stuff. But she, I mean, she, she, she stopped talking eventually, so, like. She saw them. Yeah. She saw them. Like, uh, she like, started like, seeing like the babies. Patricia. Yeah, like Letitia, she was like, "Yeah, let me shut the fuck up." Like, yeah, she, <laughs> I'm like, I'm black Panther now. They start seeing somebody else in that Black Panther suit. Yeah. Like, oh shit. Well, with, with Letitia, <laughs> with Letitia, I think it was more like, I mean, not to compare these two because they're very wildly different scenarios, but uh, like with the Flash situation, like Shuri is the the lead of your movie. You can't just edit her out. Hope is a lot easier. Oh, they can rewrite you though. Yeah, they can make a they can make Okoye the new Black Panther. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. They can just easily do that. That's a good point. They'd be they're they're not afraid of I bet you they showed her a concept art of you. Okoye is the goddamn Black Panther. She was like, okay, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my bad. I was acting crazy. You no, know, I was acting crazy. The shots you get when you come over to Africa, they make something they make you, you know, I had a couple of those and I'm sorry. That's why I, was uh, like, but, I was like, Letitia, like, don't fuck up your bat. Like, we rooting for. Don't say shit right. else. Keep your <laughs> mouth closed. Like Will Smith, keep your keep my wife's name out. Stay the fuck off Twitter. <laughs> and you're like, arms link of the bags. Just shut the fuck up. We already see what happened. With, we already see what happened with Gina Carano. She was about to get a whole ass spinoff, her own right. fucking show from the Mandalorian, <laughs> and she just would not shut the fuck up. Wow, man, man. Yeah, yeah, Twitter, Twitter is, is a drug, drug though. That's why I don't be on there that much. Yeah, it's, right. it's fine. I'm tweet, sorry, I don't be on there do, do tweet, yeah. but you gotta watch what you say. Watch what you say. Like, yeah, it's it's like, like I've never seen people. people. She, she was called up. I used to follow her on Twitter, especially if you're a public was... figure. Like, Grant, if you're nobody and you post some dick pics or whatever, like, who cares? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you're not, you're like, not on my Twitter. Twitter? But if you know, <laughs> I mean, if you got, if you let me know, like I'm gonna. <laughs> but if you were like a, if you are a public figure, like even sometimes with me, like I gotta realize, even though, like, in the grand scheme of things, I'm mm. nobody. But ultimately, like, I also have to accept, like, technically, I am a public figure now. Mm. So, like, you gotta watch. I gotta. You gotta watch what the fuck you say. Like, yeah. so. Like yeah. I have somebody. Granted, I don't. I said fuck them and I blocked them. But I had people come after me. I had somebody come after me uh, because I went to the red carpet at Ant Man, and they're like, "Oh, you're you're a COVID super spreader. And you don't care about your disabled fans and all this other bullshit." And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ! Christ. <laughs> there were disabled people at the carpet. Like, what are you talking about? Like, and that's why they don't care. And, about then on, them. and then on top of that, <laughs> like, I'm not. I don't have COVID. I took a test when I came home. 
and I work from home. Like I'm literally like, there's nobody here. So like, who am I? Who am I? So let's say, God forbid, I did get COVID at the red carpet. I'm in the house. Who am I spreading COVID to? Right. <laughs> so like, right. but but that I say all that. Right. But, I say, but, I, but that's what I'm saying. If somebody gave it to me there and I came home with COVID, I'm still in, like, I'm I'm. I'm isolated. You've said so like, COVID, COVID enough times that we're definitely at D Bob's house. Bro, bro, if I got if I got Brovid. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If I got Brovid too. I, I, one time I had but like, I say, but I say all that to say like people like people are obviously watching every little fucking thing I do. So like mm, right. imagine Sorry. if you're on no, imagine yeah, if you're like on a, a bigger a, platform, like you know, Letitia that, Evangeline Lilly. That, that was just that, that was just a um that was just a little running joke on this on this podcast. Basically, we've already said so much. It's definitely gonna get demonetized. We say is gonna get I, mean, I, fear, I fear that all the time I go live. I'll be cursing. I'll be like, "Dang!" I've said nigga so many times. I'm definitely getting. A letter. I'm getting an actual letter from YouTube in the mail. <laughs> it's like we don't normally do this, but could you stop saying nigga so much? Uh, well, no, yeah, like like Chris Rock said, the more shit you say, I mean, the more shit you got, the less shit you can say. So sometimes. You know, if you want to say more shit, you got to get rid of some of your shit. Uh, exactly. But before Ain't we get out of here, here uh, just a quick, you know, <laughs> overview of this post credit scene. What did y'all think of just like the post credits Super Kang convention? Uh, are you excited about what's going to happen next? Or uh, are you just more excited about Jonathan Majors acting his ass off in 15 different ways? I think it saved the movie. The The post credits? It was, it, was one of, it was one of the many things that saved the whole movie. Like one of the many times, one of the major things that saved the movie. Agreed. Post credit scene was it had me hype, but then also nervous because I'm like, if you did this with this Kang, what are you gonna do with these other Kangs? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but but just but just for the sake of it, I was like, oh shit! Like, and then just seeing Jonathan Majors in a different like. The, the, the one that talked like Voldemort, Harry Potter, the one who lives. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing the Voldemort. Come, come to die. <laughs> so him, which I think is a Mortis. The yes, Mortis, right. Mortis. The Mortis version yes. of King the Conqueror. Then you got the Ramatut version of King the Conqueror. Ramatut. Mm-hmm. Which... And then may, maybe the Scarlet Centurion, even though he wasn't wearing red, but still like. The Ramatut, Ramatut one, though, was to me a great Easter egg. Like it was a signification that we may get that game for the Fantastic Four movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, because, like, I, that was a Fantastic Four. That's like, their first, that's that's the first, first comic. comic. Right. I'm very interested yeah. to see it. I'm, they're going to have to pull the Fantastic Four out of another universe at this point. I think it'd be too oh. too unbelievable that oh. there's this super maybe scientist got, maybe, named Reed maybe Richards. They, maybe they're trapped in, the, uh, like, the microverse or the, or the negative zone or whatever. Yeah, they, maybe. And then they come out. I just think it's easy. You just say, you know, they've been private. Look at the thing. Look, look at that nigga. <laughs> you know, I, think, I like the theory that, that they. I like the theory that they were originally in the '60s, like uh, Michael Doug. Like he was their. They were their colleagues, but then they got lost mm-hmm. in time. They got lost in space and time, and then they end up in the present. That that would be really interesting. Have they set that up at any point? No, but uh, I will no. say that when Peyton Reed was uh, well, no, we were about to say. Mike. I was gonna say no, not technically, but they did talk about it in multiverse, of, like briefly, multiverse of madness, where Doctor Strange met a variant of Reed Richards, and he's like, "I've heard of you back in the day, or some shit like that." He said something like that. Right. He's like, "Oh yeah." He's like, "Yeah." Then you guys start in the the sixties or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah something like that. Ooh. Yeah. And I feel, and uh, Peyton Reed when he was initially pitching Fantastic Four to Marvel back, I mean, back to Fox back in 2003, he pitched it initially as like a period piece where they'd be in the 60s. So that would be an interesting way to you know like what? introduce the characters. I think y'all are both right. I think we're all right. That's a great way to introduce them because what happens in the first comic is they go back in time on accident and they end up meeting Kang in Egypt, ancient Egypt. And they defeat Kang and they come back. But what if they don't come back to the 60s and they come back to 2024? That would be pretty cool. Uh, and especially don't, 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 think, don't think I'm kind of nervous about because I could see Marvel doing this because it all goes fucking back to Stark in the MCU at least. <laughs> I could totally see him being, instead of Nathaniel Richards, Nathaniel Stark, Kang. 
Right. <laughs> I, could oh, totally see, I could totally see them doing that. Yeah. Which I'm like, I hope well, not. But like, they, they just, just officially came out and said that uh, they're not going to have, have Robert Downey Jr. come back. back. Which, which might be a plan. Well, that's also because yeah. he's asking for like 80 million, and they're like, nah, we ain't. <laughs> <laughs> but they might hey. they might call they might cough up and give him that money because they've they've they they've they've they've, 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 they've uh, succumbed to his demands at every single point. So exactly, yeah. and if this next movie that comes out does as bad or does worse than the, as Ant Man or has as much criticism or worse criticism than Ant Man, they, they might be like, like yo, bro. So we'll be here and give you nine million real quick. <laughs> You know what I'm I think they just need to slow history. down. I think they just need to slow down and focus more on quality over quantity. Because like yeah. even like the even like the VFX people are like stressed out and like even when mm-hmm. you think of the VFX in this movie, like the moment where little Cassie was running as uh was she yeah shot, I thought I that, like, that looks so yeah, I was janky. like that looks terrible I was like it looks terrible <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm not even like the biggest critic when it comes to VFX because like especially you know these these people Whoa. work so hard and so that being overworked but. That looked weird. <laughs> no, no, since we're talking about VFX, what did you think, Michael, about the she Oh, this is going to be another hour conversation. No, 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 I just want to know about the VFX. About the VFX? Oh, okay. oh, the VFX were good to decent in the first episode. Okay. See, but, then after, like but then after that, it just got worse and worse and worse. <laughs> it went downhill. <laughs> Yeah, there's yeah. definitely like to the point where you just stop having but, her in the damn brain. Like she just stopped being the Hulk at the end. Like we're just not gonna, gonna do that. that. She, <laughs> not gonna she, she was just Jen. Yeah, she was just Jen. They even yeah, kind of joked true. about. They even kind of joked about it in that last episode. It was like, yeah, let's turn the camera because we don't have the budget to see you shit. Right. <laughs> so I yeah. believe that both of y'all right and again that you know it's just it's about the the, v, the VFX guys, the fact that they're not even union. They get overworked, underpaid. We gotta give it some space. Yeah, and uh, luckily, Kevin Kevin Feige did come out recently and say like they're gonna at least hold off on the the release of the Disney Plus uh, Marvel shows because uh, I think he's 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 yeah, been all, reading all the tea leaves. All that's coming out this year: Secret Invasion and Loki season two. Yeah, and who knows what's coming out after that. Because uh, wow. I, I believe Iron, I believe Ironheart was also supposed to come out this year. Echo was supposed to come out this year. It was, I think, yeah. They I, think all Dare, that back. I think Daredevil was supposed to come out this year. I think that, that yeah, it, it was. was, yeah, or it is. I, I, I don't I, think I don't think it not anymore. Not, now it's just Loki and uh, yeah, yeah, Secret Loki Invasion. Secret yeah. Invasion. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, that's definitely what? a good idea. I feel like yeah, the less is more, and uh. uh DC's fucking up so bad, so bad that nobody, nobody even knows it's any of that. Which I'll just say. Nobody even knows it's any of that. Yeah, like, like yeah, yeah. As, as bad as this movie is, it's still not as bad as Black Adam. Uh, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I'll, agree, I'll, I'll agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, and I'm <laughs> glad that Peyton Reed got this out of the system uh, and they didn't actually give him a Fantastic Four movie. Because uh, I didn't want I wouldn't want to see that. Uh, but you got like Peyton Reed. <laughs> what? I said, you, you like Peyton Reed? No, I actually hate all of his movies except for Bring It On. Um, yeah, that was <laughs> you like Bring It On? Yeah, that one's good, but the rest I, I'm not. He, he he did the first Bring It On. Yeah, he did the first Bring It On. Okay, see, I like I like the first Bring It On. Yeah, yeah, great, yeah. great movie. That's Matter of fact, fact where is Peyton Reed? Let's get him doing another movie. <laughs> even, even 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 though the Clover should have had a bigger role in that movie, like. Right? Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we should have. It should have been, it been more. Have, it should have been more about them. But we gotta have a brand new all podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, gotta have a brand new podcast. Uh, but yeah, but they Michael. Always, they always gotta have the white people as the leads. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah. Gabrielle yeah. Union wasn't lead. lead. I mean, <laughs> she was, but she wasn't. Not really. Like, I just right. fast forward through the parts that had Gabrielle Union. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, uh, yeah, she's what everybody remembers, but yeah, unfortunately. She's like Jenna Van Dyne in this movie. <laughs> um, but, uh, Michael, thank you so much for joining us here on the podcast. We really appreciate it. Yeah, you um, want to shout out for, any of your things, man? Yeah, where can the people find you? Thank you for having me. Uh, you can find me all over the Googles, the internets, uh, Black Gay Comic <laughs> Geek, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, all of that stuff. 
Uh, also, this weekend, Saturday, February 25th, uh, I will be on two panels at Virtuous Con. It is black owned, ran by black women, yep, yep. owned by black women, uh, black people all all on through the uh, panels. Yeah, yeah. Content creators, yada yada yada, it's, and it's all virtual, so you could be naked in bed watching. You don't got to leave your house. <laughs> okay. Tickets aren't expensive. They're like they're only like ten dollars. Tickets are only ten dollars plus tax. And so I'll be doing one panel about like queer characters and comics, you know, representation. And then I'll also be moderating a panel about like uh, being a content creator and what does it take and all that, uh, all that other stuff. It's actually be my be my first time moderating a panel. So pull right out virtuous, virtuous Con. I'll be doing both. The Virtuous Con is all weekend, Saturday and Sunday, but my two panels are on Saturday. So. Cool, cool. You guys make sure to check that out. I will have uh, links in the description so you guys can check yeah, out all the information about it. Uh, in right there. The uh, and I also go live every week to talk uh, the newest episode of The Last of Us. So join me on my YouTube channel for that. But guys, we try to do this every once in a while. So go ahead and leave a like, subscribe so you can get updates on new videos. Check us out on Twitter, IG, TikTok, Likewise, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, right all the internet things at The Drunk Banthas. Right there. Until next time, stay safe, my little, 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 little subatomic people. And may the force be with you. <laughs> Ciao. Well, thank you so much, Michael, for uh, joining us on the pod. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll send you an email uh, when we're gonna like post it and everything, just so you know like, when it's up. Uh, but yeah, it's audio and video. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, we'll edit it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, we'll send you a link once uh, it's up, or like when we, yeah, once it's up. <laughs> it shouldn't be too long. Yeah, this dude's pretty quick. <laughs> it's like you know it sounds cool Netflix and chilling with myself <laughs> uh, yeah he uh, actually is pretty good with it so um, he should be done with it pretty quickly I don't yeah, do know editing so I can't really I honestly shouldn't even say anything about it yeah we should have it up by tomorrow morning honestly that's the plan but uh, but we'll let you know if anything changes but uh, have a good night Michael uh, we'll uh, be in touch take care Right. Michael's YouTube name is Black Gay Comic Geek. Black Gay Comic Geek. Yeah, I said that really fast. Black Gay Comic Geek. You didn't say it very fast. It was perfect.